Perfect. Um, dear Chairman and colleagues, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and to seemingly go from the big cost question to the next presentation about our cost analysis regarding Da Vinci single site versus multi-port gold standard cold cystectomy. Uh, my disclosures. So the background for the study, um, Da Vinci single site cold cystectomy had a limited launch in Europe in 2011. We were part of that and since then we have an abundance of literature showing that procedure is feasible with a similar parameter outcomes when compared to the gold standard approach. There is one RCT sponsored by Intuitive showing better cosmetic outcomes, but we also have several papers showing an additional hernia rate between 6.5 and 19% after that procedure. Most importantly for this analysis, there's no quality cost data at this point. So there's no secret that Da Vinci is a heavyweight in terms of costs and um, capital investment, uh, service costs, instruments, and accessories have to be considered varying depending on caseload, uh, model of Da Vinci, and instrument usage. However, cost analysis is not that simple. Surgical costs might be balanced with clinical outcomes. If you're looking transitioning an open approach to uh, an MIS approach, that might work due to uh, fewer blood conservation or uh, a shorter length of stay. It gets a lot more tricky if you're transitioning a laparoscopic approach uh, to a robotic approach. However, you might be able to balance costs by avoiding costly laparoscopic equipment such as staplers and reducing complication. Um, and um, so that's why we were looking at that. So our study methods, we created a single center retrospective uh, analysis of clinical and cost outcomes. We took all our Da Vinci single site patients with the nine disease. We operated them between 2011 and 2015 when we transitioned to the XI system. And we case matched them against multi, uh, multi port laparoscopic patients. Our matching criteria included age, gender, BMI, the operative indication and the timing of the surgery. Um, the methods for our surgical procedure for the Da Vinci single site procedure, we were highly selective initially in terms of patients and surgeons. We transitioned to a teaching approach. We placed a perimbugal um, single port according to intuitive guidance. There was no routine cholangiogram, although we performed it in a few patients and the surgical site was closed at the surgeon's discretion. As we are a university hospital, the multi-port uh, standard approach was a teaching procedure, classically four ports with the surgeon's position between the patient's legs. We routinely perform cholangiogram for the majority of the patients. Again, closure at the surgeon's discretion. Now it's getting a bit more complicated, the methods for our cost analysis. We heavily relied on our controlling department. Um, the capital investment is particularly hard to calculate in our situation. We had two Da Vinci SI systems on a lease in different terms with a buyout and a trade-in at the end. So the guidance on uh, roughly on average 300 cases per year was an upcharge of $1,519 per surgery. Um, for the instruments, we took the standard aura set for both procedures. The aura time was calculated at around $17 per minute. Um, hospital guidance was uh, to consider $627 for an outpatient procedure and $1,425 per day for inpatient procedures. Um, since 2012, Switzerland has a standardized cost analysis called recall. Uh, which is very detailed, and we use that to um, uh, account for the cost of follow-up surgeries. Now, let's have a look at our outcomes. Uh, the demographic parameters are all very similar due to successful matching. Looking at the operative parameters, uh, we found a comparable OR time and comparable rates of conversions and complications. However, we had significantly more board-certified surgeons operating on the Da Vinci single port cohort. Now going into the post-operative parameters, again, we see comparable uh, complication rates. 
we see comparable lengths of stay. However, in our robotic cohort, we saw significantly more outpatient procedures. Our follow-up results, um, with a follow-up time of almost five years um, until February this year, um, we had seven hernia repairs in the Da Vinci single site cohort versus none in the multiport cohort. Um, the time uh, to follow up surgery was a little over two years. And um, these underlying clinical data bring us to our cost outcomes. Very interestingly, due to uh, um, a higher rate of outpatient procedures, the cost for robotic hospitalization was slightly lower. However, with the impact of the costs of the Da Vinci, we result in significantly higher perioperative costs for those patients as well as for significantly higher follow-up costs due to a higher rate of follow-up surgery. To be fair, I want to mention some limitations of that study. We still have a certain bias uh, in regards to, to the cholangiogram and the surgeons operating. However, with this highly selective approach, it was impossible to factor that into the matching criteria. We would not have found um, enough matches. So we have to be really careful with the similar overall times here. Um, another very important point is uh, we do not have enough details in regards to the type of the closure we did. We initially thought this is a minimally invasive approach and closed them with um, the same methods as a multiport procedure maybe that contributed to some of the hernias. And it is a chart review only, so we couldn't control for a move away. But there's no reason to assume a difference in both groups. And that leads me to the conclusions. In terms of clinical outcomes, I think it's pretty clear this method is feasible. However, I think um, it becomes more and more clear that da Vinci's single site cholecystectomy is at risk for the formation, uh, formation of incisional hernias. Overall, we need more systematic clinical research to assess is that um, an incision that is rather to be considered as a mini laparotomy and needs to be closed differently than a, a laparoscopic incision. And also, we need a sufficient long-term follow-up. Intuitive's RCT you can find on clinicaltrials.com. They're going to look at hernia formation at 12 and 18 months, and that is just insufficient and a very biased industry view. In terms of financial conclusions, it's pretty obvious we have higher overall costs for the Vinci single site cholecystectomy compared to the gold standard approach which leads me to my final slide and the big question here. Who should actually pay for that difference? In our healthcare environment with DRGs, the healthcare provider pays for the higher perioperative costs, which could be um, a strategic decision. Long-term costs have to be covered by the insurance companies, which in the future might lead to reimbursement challenges for such procedures. A fair question would be, should patients pay an upcharge for a procedure that most likely only has cosmetic benefits. Thank you very much.